Check this out. She was reading, taken by the fourth kind. If it's not an altitude chamber, then what could it be? Other than that. She was alive when she went in. These scratches on her face indicate that she tried to move. I'm going to get her back to the lab. She's got a notation here for 3 p.m. yesterday. It just says TJ. And nothing else? Nope. Maybe TJ was a ghost coming to visit. Mediums are the ones that can see ghosts, right, Castle? Yes. Psychics can tell the future. Mediums can tell the future and talk to the dead. That's like saying that psychics are con artists and mediums are con artists and charlatans. I mean, in the end, they're all just fakes. You sound pretty certain of yourself. That's because when I started as a cop, I wasted a lot of time on clairvoyance calling tip lines with information that never led to anything. I mean, I'm surprised you're so gullible. I'm not saying I can speak with the dead. I'm just willing to admit that there are people in this world who are more sensitive than me. Now, that's not hard to believe. The time code lines up with the night that Valtini said he was attacked. According to ER records, he was admitted that night. Knife wounds to the buttocks. The sword of justice. Wait, is that... No. It can't be. It is. Our killer is a superhero. I think I can shed some light on why Jack didn't want to do the show here. Talk to an old high school pal that Jack had breakfast with a couple days ago. Turns out that our Vic actually used to live right near the McLaren house. Said that he used to walk a couple blocks out of his way just to avoid walking past it. Said it gave him a creeped out feeling. You see, I am telling you, there was something going on with this house. The last people to the last people that lived there moved out four years ago in a hurry. Why? I don't know, but I think it's time we found out. Knock yourself out, Castle. You're not coming? No, I've got a murder to solve. I'll go. Ooh. That's a look. Yeah. I get these a lot to start walking. Walk. Faster. Hey Laney. So what do we got here? That's a good question. I can tell you this much, based on body temp and lividity, our victim died between 10 and midnight. Claw marks? She was attacked by an animal? Well, she was running from something. She's got dirt on her feet. What animal in Central Park could maul a person to death? I'm not even sure that's what happened. These lacerations look shallow, non-lethal, but I won't know exactly what killed her until I get her back to the morgue. Do you have an ID? No wallet or purse, so we don't know who she is. Um. Isn't it obvious? I mean, but the only one seeing this? What? Red cloak in the woods, animal attack. She's Little Red Riding Hood. Great Castle, I'll call in an APB for the Big Bad Wolf. Do you have a better theory? Hey, Ryan. Do you think you could call dispatch, see if there are any reports of a violent animal running around the park? Like a wolf? A big bad one? Really? That is exactly how I pictured her. It's freaky. My older sister used to read me that story. Okay, when you're done reliving your childhood memories, do you also think that you could canvas the area for witnesses and anyone that might know her name? And I bet you it's not gonna be Little Red Riding Hood. On it. All the better to eat you with. No sooner had the wolf said these words, when he leaped up and gobbled down poor little Red Riding Hood. Well, the good news is the wolf can talk, so if we can find him, we might be able to get a confession. Yeah, except in the original story, the wolf doesn't kill little Red Riding Hood. The huntsman cuts her out of the wolf's stomach, and then she kills the wolf. Someone's a Brothers Grimm fan. Oh, yeah, they didn't sugarcoat it. They understood that fairy tales are pretty much horror stories. Exactly. Now, Charlie made this 911 call moments after the attack. Does it sound like he's faking to you? It sounds like Charlie's having a psychotic break. What if his guilt made him snap and he created a fantasy in which zombies killed David and not him? I'm not so sure. I mean, his voice does have that authentic ring of pants waiting terror. You do not believe in Charlie's story. I believe he believes it. Okay, well, whatever you believe, all of the evidence points to the fact that Charlie Coleman is our killer. Maybe not all the evidence. CSU analyzed that bite mark on Charlie's arm. Turns out that it matches the bite mark on a victim. Maybe Charlie bit David and then he bit himself? Well, I was thinking the same thing, but CSU also says that the bite marks were made by Charlie's teeth. Oh, we, um, sorry. Let me make sure I understand so that I might properly relish this moment. You're saying the evidence shows that Charlie and the victim both were bitten by an as yet unknown third party. That's what Perhaps I said. Perhaps even 
a mindless shoveling on death or party. Castle, just stop. There's no such thing as a zombie. Guys, you gotta see this. So I was combing through security camp footage near the parking garage, and I found this. Time stamps 4.06 a.m., which fits time of death. That's our guy. Yeah, but it's not Charlie. Wait, what is he wearing? That looks like an old-fashioned suit. Circa 1870, and his shirt's missing a cuff. Whoa! Jeez. Almost got hit by that taxi, didn't even flinch. Well, maybe this is why. Look what we get from the other angle. My friends, that is a zombie. A killer's a zombie. Yeah. And Ryan, why don't you take a look at this disc and see? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What? Et tu, bro? What did you say about the story being a legend? Um. Well. Uh. Jenny and I, we are trying to make a baby, so we're abiding by every superstition in the book. Okay, fine. Here, Asma. Uh, nah, I, I can't. I can't watch that. If I watch that, it's gonna make my partner out to be a wimp, and I can't have that. Thanks, bro. Yeah. This is so pathetic. Fine, I will watch it. Wait, no, what are you doing? Castle, I'm doing my job. Someone here has to. Okay, think of the risks. You may not think there's anything to this, but what if you're wrong? You know, I appreciate your concern, but it's just a DVD. You, you don't, you can't just play it. Let me take precautions here. The whole precinct suffering my fate. I'm not scared. Well, I wasn't asking for you. Hmm. Are you ready? Doesn't matter. Help me! Where are their sounds? Right, gets worse. Are you for it? You saw. Midnight on the third day, you die. You're right, it is kind of creepy. Thank you. Because the killer made it creepy, Castle. Maybe these images meant something to the victim. Clues to the relationship between her and the killer. Wait. Go back. That one, that one there, that's the, um, that's the Tibetan wheel. Symbolizes rebirth. Hang on. That is the Masonic compass. That's... They felt it represented, uh, resurrection. Your point being? Oh. Rebirth. Resurrection. This video obviously resurrects something from the great beyond, something dangerous, something murderous. I mean, what other explanation can there be? There are plenty of explanations, Castle, and none of them are supernatural. In fact, I bet Perlmutter has our cause of death by now. Those talks... An autopsy report should be done. Are you saying you actually believe you can't die? My victims gave me unique insight into death, into its secrets. Even when my body perishes, my essence will continue on. I will continue on. You see, death is just the beginning. Wow, that guy gives a whole new meaning to the word psycho. I wonder if he did find a way to let his spirit live on. Like the killer in those Chucky movies who transferred his spirit into that spooky doll. Exactly. Only instead of a doll, it's a DVD. That explains the message you saw you die. The witnesses saw his crimes, so they must die. Well, then, given that logic, we'd both be okay because we're not witnesses. But you're a cop. I'm a cop helper. I mean, you don't think a convicted serial killer is going to have an axe to grind with the NYPD? Castle, Nigel Malloy is not involved. He's dead. Take a look, Castle. A person of interest. Emphasis on the word person. Talk to Anne's friends and family and see if anyone recognizes him. Um, I wouldn't rule out Bigfoot just yet. 
Turns out there have been dozens of reported Bigfoot sightings in the city in the past couple months. Is that right? Why, Detective Ryan, please tell us about this new and extraordinary development. Like this woman in Brooklyn. She says that Bigfoot tried to break into her apartment on the second floor. Gentlemen, I hate to rain on your parade. Do you? No. But here's the reason that Bigfoot reports have spiked. Two months ago, TV show Mission Monster put out a million dollar reward for the capture and or proof that Bigfoot exists. Hmm. See, Castle, all of this evidence that you claim proves Bigfoot's existence is actually people angling for money. So you're saying it's just a coincidence that Anne was working with primates and mysteriously killed where Bigfoot prints were found. No, not a coincidence, just a hoax. If it's such a hoax, then tell me why I found this. I dug into her phone records. Turns out the last phone call she ever made was to Daryl Meeks. The Daryl Meeks? Who's, Who's Daryl Meeks? Meeks? Who's, Who's Daryl Meeks? Meeks? Just a world-renowned cryptozoologist. That's a scientist who searches for as yet undiscovered creatures. Such as unicorns and centaurs. Manchies and leprechauns? Dr. Meeks also happens to be the foremost authority on Bigfoot. And lo and behold, she called him on the very day she died. Still think Bigfoot has nothing to do with this? Perlmutter's got something for us. Why don't you guys head over there? Castle and I will talk to the world's foremost authority on Bigfoot. 